Okay, so hydropower library here. I introduced myself before, so I'm not going to do it again. So a little bit about the agenda of the library. So first discuss what it worries. Hydropower library, what can you do with it? What is the key features? Uh, and then we have uh, also some examples of what you can do and what kind of effects uh, hydropower library can handle. And after that, we'll take a look at the library contents and I will have a demo in Daimola. Uh, so what is hydropower library? So it's a Modelica library for modeling hydropower systems. You can use it for modeling and simulation of uh, hydropower plants for commissioning. Uh, you can use it for testing new control strategies, for development and verification of new plant designs. Uh, you can use it for study uh, analysis of waterway dynamics. And maybe you can use it for uh, tuning plant controllers for optimal performance. And one advantage with the simulation, simulation of these types of processes is that you maybe you can re reduce the risk of unexpected events. Uh, and usually those tests are quite expensive. And maybe due to some safety constraints, you can't test everything uh, in reality as you can do in simulation. So I think simulation ha has a lot of benefits here. The key features of the library are that they are quickly uh, to set up using drag and drop. Uh, its library is well suited for uh, control design. The simulation goes usually, if it, it of course depends on the size, but it usually goes quite fast and they are robust. And it's uh, very often that you can initialize, all the example is initialized in steady state. So it means that they start uh, really quick. It's possible to integrate use other libraries for modeling some parts. For example, it's possible to integrate hydraulic or electrical models. So one example there could be like the turbine actuators. Now they are modeled as uh, yeah, the first order filters and so on. But it's possible by user, for example, if he has the hydraulic library to build uh, a hydraulic act actuators and use them instead. And uh, yeah, key, other key features are uh, uh, you can uh, have a better understanding of the waterway dynamics. Um, you can plan commis commissioning tests and procedures. Uh, it's possible to estimate, uh, use it to estimate possible necessary start and stop rates of the guide veins. Uh, other key features are um, you can use it for identification of, of objectives for the water level control. So it means you can maybe use it to see what are robust set points for a water level, etc. You can see what happens if you're having load re rejection at the grid. So there's a plot here. And the first upper plot is the generator frequencies is normalized. So that's why one is equal to maybe yeah, usually what's, what's normal if it's 50 or 60 hertz in the grid. So what happens if you have a load re re uh, reaction, then it will produce, suddenly produce too much power and then the grid frequency will go up, but you control it. Uh, so, and you do that by, uh, yeah, for example, changing the guide vanes input to the turbines. So you can do, you can do this kind of analysis uh, with the library. Just one example of uh, a typical, uh, yeah, some examples of what you can do with the library. The first one is uh, a model of a complete, yeah, plant. It contains a reservoir model that's con uh, connected with a with a penstock, which is just a, a yeah, a water pipe with a, some elevation. Then it's co uh, connected to a turbine. In this case, it's a Kaplan turbine. Then it's uh, after the turbine, there's another uh, water pipe that is connected to a reservoir. And uh, the model also contains uh, a model of the grid. You see it at the bottom, the power grid. And it also contains uh, a generator. So in this case, we will uh, simulate and see what happens when you actually try to connect to the grid. So the example works with no load first, then it will uh, the top image uh, is the generator frequency and to the right you see the generated power. So at time equals to 250 seconds, it actually connects to the, to the grid. And this is something that you can simulate with this library. 
uh, a little bit smaller examples is just to focus on uh, what kind of effects the library can handle. I was discussing with some, uh, yeah, some customers if uh, I had some questions if it's possible, can you handle search tank oscillations and water hammer effects? And this is something that the library can handle. And uh, this example is here is that we have a reservoir that is connected to a penstock, which is uh, yeah, uh, a pipe model uh, with some elevation. Then it's connected to a search tank, which is can be seen as a uh, open tank. And then it's connected to a, a pipe with a valve, and then connected to a reservoir. And the, at a certain point, the the valve um, it changes its opening and so on, and this will generate uh, pressure variations in the systems, and uh, this will uh, the pressure variations will generate uh, uh, tank oscillations in the search tank component. And this is something that you can see to the top left image here. That it actually you see the height of the of the water level there, and you can see that Tupigo handles these oscillations, which are very common. So this is something that the library can handle. Um, another quite famous thing is the water hammer effect. Uh, so this is more or less that if you have a water that moving and then you suddenly close a valve, then we will have more or less like shock waves in the system. And this is something they call water hammer. And they usually have a really high frequency. So this example demonstrates this. This we're closing the valve uh, at time 10 seconds. Then you will see that the pressure goes up and it will st start to oscillate. And this is only to show that uh, this library can handle this water hammer effect. Okay, so um, a little bit about uh, what you can find in the library. The library content have a controller which is uh, special controllers for hydropower plants which are PID based with different uh, parameter settings dependent if the model for example are connecting on the grid or not. It contains uh, electrical model, uh, it contains a power grid model so it's a dynamic grid model where it's possible to add and remove load on production units during simulation. Uh, it also contains generator models and this switch, which is called MCB, main circuit breaker, which is used to connect to the grid. Uh, and it has several different hydro systems components, which you will find under hydro systems package. So it contains discretized pipe models, valve models, reservoir models, and surge tank. Uh, under mechanical, you will actually find the different turbines. So there are two different turbines. So it's uh, both are uh, table based. So you specify efficiencies and so. Uh, so basic Kaplan turbine is used for modeling Kaplan turbines, and the other one, basic turbine, is used for modeling, for example, Pelton or Francis turbines. And uh, yeah, otherwise we have there also a little bit of visualizers that you can use to simplify the post-processing process. Uh, you have sinks and sources. Uh, the media, it's only a water media that you can use. Uh, yeah, I think that was most of it. So I go to the last slide, which is references. Uh, this hydropower library is de developed with a man called uh, John Tushinsky. And the, he's a hydropower expert that has been working now, now he's retired, but he had a lot of experience with this hydropower. Uh, I know that a, a customer in Asia, power utility company in Asia, have been using it. Um, it is used by uh, the Telemark University in uh, in Norway for education and research within the industry. Uh, there's a paper published in the in the Modelica conference at 2011 uh, from 
from the people there at the Telemark University, uh, which is about modeling and optimization of deviation in hydropower production. Uh, I can also mention that we also just recently changed the name of the library. So they in this uh, paper they reference to Hydroplant Library. So that was the former name of it. So, so it can also be seen as a previous version of it. Okay, so I think I demo a little bit in uh, demo. Perfect. Um, so just to show you a little bit what you can find in the library and what's available. Uh, so we have an information package here and it says something about getting started. So we actually have uh, some user manuals. So they reference, if you just click here, you will open up the user's guides. So that's a good uh, start point. You also have uh, information about solver settings, etc. They are a little bit special when you're using simulating hydropower system because they are usually oscillating and so on, the systems. Um, under examples, uh, we have several different examples. Uh, the largest examples are those called plant. So this was this plant connecting to the grid. Uh, we have an example where you connect and disconnect to the grid also. Uh, we have a little bit larger examples with several parallel turbines that you can uh, con connect and uh, disconnect individually to the grid. Uh, other examples are for this pan stock only. When you just, yeah, so there are more uh, examples of what you can do with single components and how you can uh, investigate it. Um, and uh, yeah, so there are examples of reservoirs, etc. Um, under controllers and sensors is where you will find those special uh, uh, hydropower controllers. So this is the turbine governor analog, is the standard controller that is used in the examples. But it's also a sampled variant of the controller too. Under electrical systems is where you will find uh, this dynamic grid model. Uh, we have a generator model also and MCB, which is this main circuit breaker, which is the switch to the grid. Uh, under hydro systems is where you will find all the different uh, hydro system components. So it's this pen stock, which is uh, discretized pipes. Uh, we have yeah a little bit of different variants here. TLM is this uh, is some kind of analytic pen stock model that can be used if you want to sim simulate really long pipes and you don't want to discretize so much. We also have a reservoir search tank uh, model. Under mechanical systems is where you will find the uh, uh, find the turbines, uh, and they are table based. So if we click on the info layer here, there are examples of what kind of data that you need in order to uh, what kind of data you need to parameterize the models. Uh, under sinks and sources is where you will find standard sinks and sources. You can specify if you want to have a flow source, a pressure source, or specify just the height. Uh, and under visualizers is where you will find uh, different type of visualizers. Okay, so I will demo an example. I can start with this plant, plant con connecting to grid I talked about before. So it contains of a reservoir model. So I can click on the parameter dialog here. So there you need to specify a typical geometry size of this uh, reservoir. So this reservoir is also discretized. And we've done it in order to be able to simulate wave phenomena in the reservoir. Uh, Penstock. Uh, is this closed pipes? So this you parameterize it by typical ge geometrical parameters like length. Uh, you specify the elevation, so the height differences here with the yeah with those two parameters. And because it's a discretized pipe, you can also specify uh, the number of penstock segments here. Um, 
the friction uh, or the pressure loss <coughs> parameter is specified by a pipe roughness. So you specify uh, an average relative roughness of the pattern. Hello. Um, and uh, you can also specify if you want to initialize the systems in steady state. And this is something that we do in all examples. So then we'll go fast to simulate. Um, the turbine governor which is the controller of the whole system, is where it's PID based. So if you have a more uh, advanced controller, it's something you can replace with. In this case, it has a little bit of different uh, PI or PI parameters, dependent if it's connected to the grid or not. And yeah, it has a little bit more advanced uh, control parameters too. Uh, and we have, <clears throat> except for the reservoir and waterway and controller, we also have uh, see that the turbine is connected to the power grid and the generator here. Um, so the power grid is that you can specify uh, different uh, specify units, and if you uh, if you have a disturbances of the load, if you have load rejection or something, this is something something you can add. And it has uh, different time, different groups, uh, which correspond to different time constants because it depends on what is actually connected to the grid. If it's, if you have nuclear power plants or uh, coal-fired power plants, they have a little bit of different time constants and so. Uh, the generator is a little bit more uh, simple to parameterize. You specify the inertia of the generators number of poles, uh, nominal power, and some efficiency. And it also has some damping factor. Um, and it's here you can specify for a main circuit breaker when you will try to close or connect to the, to the grid. So I can simulate this model here. So it should go really quick here. So you see that I simulated 400 seconds, and it only took under 4 seconds to do that. So I go to the simulation button. I press here the diagram so we can have some visualization. So instead of just clicking run here, I can drag. You can see a little bit well, what's happening. At the bottom here you see uh, pressure in and out of the pen stock, uh, the flow in in square meter or cubic meter per second and temperature etc and at the top, top here you see generator frequency and the generated po uh, power here so we have decided uh, we specified in the generator that we should try to connect at time equals to 250 seconds this is when we connect to the grid and this is when we start to produce power from the power plant hydropower here um, other examples is that, for example, if you will, uh, I can choose to demonstrate this water hammer effect, and this is penstock valve closing. In the next release, I can say I have uh, renamed some of the examples here just to, to water hammer. So you can, I think it's quite good to demo those effects for a customer. So this is just a penstock with a fixed uh, inlet and outlet pressure that it's closed at uh, a specific time. So at time 50, we we'll almost closed the uh, valve to zero. So if we simulate this. You can see here the effects uh, that the pressure is touched. When we close it, it will almost be like shock waves, which is called a hem. Uh, water hammer effect and uh, start to oscillate really fast. So this is something that uh, uh, yeah, the models can handle those type of effects. And this is something that you, if you're simulating, this is something that you really want to avoid if you, sell, if you have those time, uh, types of systems. Because it can create a lot of damage when you have so fast pressure gradient. Chris um, okay, so I think that was a little bit everything, uh, just a quick overview of, of, of what you can do with the library and so on. So, are there any questions? No.